guys welcome back to the channel okay so this is a bit of a new thing um i'm trying to ramp up the activity on the channel i want to grow it a little bit faster so i'm moving to a two video a week schedule the plan is to do tuesday and friday so every three days or so you're going to get a new video from me and it feels like since last week's video on friday where we're talking about the tesla stock split that the tesla share price has just gone through the roof and to be honest i anticipated this because the news of a stock split is designed to stimulate uptake investment in a company and we've certainly seen that across apple who did it first this month and tesla who are now doing exactly the same in fact just as I was doing this, I got a notification for my Trading212 account saying Tesla stock at an all-time high. So I'm just going to go in here because let's have a look at what the Tesla stock price right now is. The Tesla stock price right now is $1,814.47. It is absolutely crazy it's nuts i bought in at 850 dollars only about three months ago so what i want to do in this video is i want to talk about tesla and i want to talk about whether you as a first-time investor as a novice beginner should be concerned about the stock price and in doing so i'm going to talk about the pros of the business why the stock price is where it is and i'm also going to talk about some of the the cons the disadvantages that they face as well and things that you definitely need to consider I know I am really excited about Tesla. Obviously, I own a Tesla. I have done for five years. I love the company. I own the stock. So even I have to check myself around being too, too over enthusiastic about this stock. I need to perhaps dial it back a little bit and look at things a little bit more dispassionately. And I do. But I also want to make sure that in these videos that I convey my excitement about this stock to you because I think that's really, really important. To, in order for you to buy a company, you need to be excited about what they do. And I'm very, very passionate about what Tesla do. But I do want to bring it back down to basics, talk about the business, talk about some of the forecasts, talk about the pros and the cons so that you can make the best financial, well, investment decision possible. But again, guys, make sure, please do not take this as financial advice. This is for information, educational purposes only. Do further research. Start with my opinion and expand on it and make your own decision. So with that being said, and the fact that we're moving to two videos a week, and this is the first one for this week, smash the like button and make sure that you subscribe so that you get notified when these videos get uploaded on a Tuesday and on a Friday. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the fundamentals behind Tesla because fundamentals are really important whether you're going to buy into a business like Tesla or whether you're starting a business or whether you own a business. Your business has to solve a problem, has to deal with a concern in order for it to be viable, in order for it to survive, in, in order for it to have customers and have a product that sells. And Tesla is no different. And you just need to have a look at the whole purpose of Tesla. Why was Tesla created? Tesla was created to end the reliability, the, 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 the dependence that we have on fossil fuel. And you know, you just need to look at environmental issues, right? Pollution. There are agencies there are you know generations of people who know that this is a real problem we see across the world governments introducing schemes to develop green energy renewable energy it is a thing now and when it comes to the motoring industry or car manufacturing industry tesla are at the forefront of this movement and you know in 2018 there were five million electric vehicles sold and that number is only going to go up it's not going to decrease and you just need to have a look at all of the models that you know tesla have available to on the market right now you've got the model 3 which is coincidentally the most popular electric vehicle on the market you've got the model s the model y which is also very very new to the market but going to be very very popular because of the price range and you've also got the model x which is you know the 4x4 the range rover of uh, of their range and it's really important to understand that electric vehicles are no longer these things that you know are impractical that uh, can't 
be used to travel long distances. My Tesla, which I'm in right now, is a 2014-2015. Even back then, they were pushing out cars that could do over 200 miles. And that's really important to note because all of the newer models, the P100, the P75s now, um, even though they stopped doing that range, um, the Model 3, these cars can all do over 300 miles on a single charge, which means the, the impracticality or the perceived impracticality of the electric car is no more. It really isn't an issue anymore. I, in this car, have 242 miles. I regularly travel from where I live in Shropshire down to London and do very, very long journeys without ever, ever being worried that I'm going to, you know, run out of electricity. And I'm going to come to why that is the case and why Tesla have strategic advantages on their competitors. And we're also going to talk a little bit about their competitors a bit later on. So you have to understand the basics around Tesla, what they're there to do, what their vision is, what their mission is, and why they are positioned so well within the business. But it's also very, very important that we acknowledge one other thing about Tesla as well. You see, Tesla is not just a car manufacturing company. A lot of people forget this. Tesla is a tech company. And as part of their tech product development, they also have other aspects to the business. For example, Tesla is also a solar panel, solar roof company. And this is a business that Elon himself has said is likely or on road to be bigger than the actual electric car vehicle side of the business. You've got to understand how the mind of Elon works. He's produced a technology that is there to better the world, to take our reliance off fossil fuels, and he's taken this to different applications. So, you know, if you have a look at solar panels, the solar roof uh, design that he has, they are tiles on your roof that generate energy. And what a genius thing to do. It's just another facet of the business. It's not just about cars. And another thing that is really, really important that he's launched recently is Tesla Insurance. Now, I've owned this car for five years, and I can tell you right now, this car is very, very expensive to insure. I've never paid less than £1,200 a year for this car, and I am 40 years old, to the point that it's actually quite frustrating. My renewal is on September 23rd, and I tell you this, I've already done some preliminary insurance quotes, and I'm being quoted six £1,600, £2,000 to insure this car. And Elon is fully aware of this because the owners group have been talking about how expensive it is to insure these cars for absolute years. And now Elon has introduced Tesla insurance. And the whole goal behind this is to undercut and make the cost of insuring one of these cars a lot cheaper by about 20 to 30%. Now, it's only available in the US right now, but the insurance market in the US is worth $280 billion a year. Now, that isn't to say he's going to get a massive uh, share of that particular market. But for owners like myself who own this car, if we can get the insurance cheaper, 20%, 30% cheaper, I tell you right now, I would be buying insurance from Elon and not from Churchill or, or Liverpool Victoria or whoever it is that, that I've used over the last five years with these guys. That is just another element of the business that he has introduced. And then we have to talk about the product line. I've already alluded to the Model 3 being the most popular EV in the world by a long mile, but everybody's forgetting things like the Cybertruck. I mean, this thing, when I first saw it when it was unveiled, I thought it just looked like something out of a sci-fi movie like it just looked crazy but Elon is very intentional in what he does. He always said that if ever he went into the sector for things like pickup trucks, that he wanted to make a statement. And how do you make a statement other than having something like the Cybertruck look like the way it does? But there is rhyme to this madness. The whole idea about producing something that has never been seen before is intentional with Elon. You only need to have a look at the size of that market in America. It is absolutely huge. The most popular truck in America is the, is the F-150. The Cybertruck towed an F-150 uphill. 
it's that powerful. So you, he's, he's trying to break into a sector of the market in America, which is dominated right now by Ford, but they've got some serious competition coming. And as the reliability of these cars continue to improve, as the range and the battery efficiency, the battery technology begins to improve, this can only be a good thing for the share price. You then don't even need to talk about the semi truck. I mean, that thing is absolutely crazy. It's amazing. If you've not watched a video on this thing, go and watch it. But the favorite one of mine that is not yet launched, but will be launched in the next year or two is the Tesla Roadster. I mean, how can anybody compete? How can Ferrari? How can Lamborghini? How can Bugatti? How can all of these big companies compete with a car that you can buy for £200,000 or $200,000? And yes, I know it is a lot of money doing 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds when Bugatti's cost 1.2, 1.3, over a million dollars to purchase. This is a huge revolution in the motoring sector using electricity at its core. And then you need to have a look at what the experts, the professional investors are saying about Tesla. Now for professional investors, I'm only gonna mention two names, Kathy Woods and Ron Barron. Now, Kathy Woods is probably one of the best investors that you have never heard about. Right from the get-go, she has been very, very bullish on Tesla because I think she spotted the opportunity and the market size of Tesla. The market that they're going for, what they actually want to change, and she believes in that. Ron Barron, on the other hand, already owns 1.6 million shares in Tesla. And his view is that the share price still has a magnitude of 10 to go before it reaches its true potential. And that is quite staggering for a guy who ha already has 1.6 million Tesla shares. He wants more money to buy more shares. Now, when the announcement was made last week that Tesla were going to be doing a split, the share price prediction was upgraded from where it was, and I can't quite remember where it was right now, to $1,900. And I've just told you at the beginning of this video, that the share price is at $1,815 right now. When the stock split finally happens next week and the stock starts to trade at the new split price, whatever that might be at the time, we have the potential of seeing inst institutional investors, a load of retail investors really start buying into Tesla because guess what? You're not buying the shares at $1,800 anymore. You're going to be buying them at around about $500, maybe $600. And that is a psychological win because it's a discount of sorts. And that is a really important thing to bear in mind if you're investing. And that's one thing that drives us all, price. Price does drive us all. And I mentioned in last week's video as well, the S&P 500 is round the corner for Tesla. And I tell you this right now, there are some of the analysts in America who are saying that the share price of Tesla could go up to as high as 10 thousand dollars now i promised you that i wasn't just going to get excited and talk to you about all the positives it's really important that we bring it back to earth and we actually talk about some of the real things that you need to consider if you are a beginner because these numbers are great and i'll show you my portfolio a bit later on in terms of what it's actually done right now off the back of the share price being what it is today but we have to root ourselves in why are we buying this stock why are we talking about this if you are a new investor why are you buying this stock are you buying it because everybody's going crazy and i'm excited about it or are you buying it because you really believe in the company? Are you buying it because you are a long-term investor, not looking for a quick trade, a quick profit? These things are very important. So let's talk about some of the risks, some of the cons, some of the disadvantages to investing in Tesla right this second. One of the first really big things that you need to consider is the fact that this week we learned that we are officially in a recession. And unfortunately, that is something that you need to consider when you're looking at buying companies. And the fundamentals around this and the train of thought should go along the lines of what kind of product does the business produce? Let's face it, 
cars are a luxury. When people begin to lose jobs and start to have interruptions to their income, they're not thinking about cars. They are not thinking about luxuries. They are thinking about the necessities that life requires and demands. You're talking food, you're talking energy, you're talking about the basics. And unfortunately for Tesla, whilst they produce beautiful cars, a recession like this could potentially impact the sales of their cars, particularly the Model 3, which is most popular right now. Now, I can't speak for the rest of the world. Obviously, we're here in the UK, and the UK is in recession. But if this were to expand to America, if it were expand, expand to other parts of the world, then Q3 may be a really bad quarter for Tesla. And if it is, it means that you're going to see that reflected in the stock price. So recessions, unfortunately, are bad for companies like Tesla because they are producing luxury vehicles. People can give up their cars, they cannot give up paying for their electric, for their gas, for their food, for all of their necessities. So you have to bear that in mind and that is very, very topical and very, very appropriate for where we are right now. And the second thing is the high price and in hindsight, now knowing that Tesla are doing this stock split, it makes sense that Elon sent the tweet maybe two or three months ago saying that he felt that the share price was too high and the share price dropped by 10% as a result of that. Now, I literally had, I literally just bought stock at that point and I have to be honest with you, I was pissed because why would, why would Elon say that he feels that the company is overpriced with the share price and have everybody take a bath at a 10% loss on that particular day. But these are the dangers that you have. And the reality is a high stock price puts people off. Now, he's trying to address this. However, there is a counterbalance and a counter argument to this. With the share price being $1,800 right now, even if you do a split of five, which is what they're intending to, the share price is still going to be over four, five hundred dollars. To some people that is still expensive, especially after the euphoria of this share split actually taking place. Once we get two, three weeks after the new price is, you know, in the market, embedded in, people will still look at the share price and possibly think, it's too much. And that is one of the dangers that you have with this. That buyer's mentality, that price psychology is very, very real when you're investing in the stock market. I know that a number of you who watch my videos have said, look, you've not invested because the share price is too high. Believe me, when I bought at $850, I really did clinch my teeth thinking it's $850. It's a lot of money. So share price is an important factor for you to consider as well. Now, the last thing that you need to consider when you talk about buying Tesla stock is their position and how they're going to deal with competition. Now, let's be honest. We've just said that there were 5 million electric vehicles sold globally last year. The most popular electric vehicle right now is the Tesla Model 3. And unfortunately, that means that companies like Porsche, BMW, Audi, Mercedes, Volkswagen, they are all now paying attention. And with this, there is the risk that these age old manufacturers who have been in this for much, much longer than Tesla are not going to take this line down. They are not going to allow Tesla to march and gain a foothold in this market space. They are all developing electric vehicles that are actually very, very attractive. And you only need to have a look at some of the new startups, Lucid, Nikola, for example. So there is competition and the competition is going to be fierce. But again, it comes back down to how do it Tesla shape up when it comes to the competition? Do they have any strategic advantages? Now, if you've watched my previous videos about Tesla, you will know how strongly I feel about their strategic advantages when it comes to their competition. And I'm at one right now. I'm at the supercharger right now. I've done a couple of videos here. The superchargers are a massive strategic advantage for Tesla. You can drive these things on my car. You can charge for completely free. But there are so many 
of these around now that you can go on long journeys and you don't have to worry about having to plug in the vehicle for four to five hours in order for it to charge for you to get home you can literally rock up to one of these and you can charge for 40 minutes get a full charge and be on your way the other thing that often people will argue is well what about battery technology all of these new manufacturers are also working on new battery technology but so are tesla i don't believe for a second that tesla are going to allow or be in a position where they are going to fall behind on battery technology. Why? Because they have been at it the longest. They have acquired companies to ensure that they stay ahead on the battery technology side. There is this rumor at this point in time that actually Tesla are developing a battery that will run for so much longer. You'll be able to get a million miles out of this battery, but it still doesn't negate the issue of range and charge time. That's where the real, the real battery is going to take place. But with all of this said, should you be buying Tesla stock? Should you be concerned as a first time investor? The answer to that is yes or no. And it really depends on why you're buying this stock in the first place. I cannot stress this enough. You have to have a goal in mind and you have to take a long-term view. The share split could happen in the next couple of weeks. Recession hits, sales tank. They have a really poor Q3. All the gains that I've made could be completely wiped out. That is a reality, but I'm holding this stock for the long term and that is where i see the value in the business i don't want the share price to go to six thousand tomorrow although it will be very very nice i might cash out i might not i want it to perform over time and with competition it only pushes tesla to be better it pushes tesla to make a better product it pushes tesla and the electric car vehicle sector to be better and competition is only good in that example Please, please bear in mind all the fundamentals, everything that I've spoken about today. It's really important that you do your own research and you come to your own determination and you think long term. This is extremely important. I cannot overstate this enough. It's really important that you do have a balanced approach to your enthusiasm when you're buying stocks. You almost have to look at this dispassionately. You need to have a look at the pros and the, and the cons. And when you're looking at information, you have to figure out whether that information either reinforces or discredits what you're already thinking about the business. And looking at this, not with rose-tinted lenses because you like the company so much, and I have to remind myself to do this all of the time. It's really being factual. It's really being dispassionate. It's looking at it for what it really is 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 there value in the business that is the fundamental question that you need to answer and if you believe that it is then maybe it's something that you should do but again it's all about your your risk appetite it is all about what you're willing to risk for a decent return and you know i have to say this really really clearly again guys you know there is risk in everything the internet will have you believe that you can invest in these companies and it's all going to be great, right? That you're never going to make a loss, that the stock will never go down. That is not reality. Stock will always go down. And I just want to re reiterate that in this video so that you can take this and use it to inform your decision, whatever that may be. Now, you stay to the end of this video and I actually have a little bit of a surprise, so thank you for being here. Now, I am fast approaching the 3,000 subscriber mark and to celebrate 3,000 subscribers, I'm actually thinking of helping one lucky subscriber out um, in a very particular way. Um, there is a monetary value involved in this, so I'm gonna announce a little bit more on Friday. It will run for a period of time, it will be a competition. And, you know, again, I'm moving to two videos a week to try and grow this channel. So your help in helping me grow this channel is really, really important to me. And you can do that by smashing the like button. If you've enjoyed everything that I've spoken about, subscribing, getting your friends to subscribe and sharing this video as well. So stay tuned on Friday. I'll announce what the surprise is going to be, what the competition is going to be. And yeah, there'll be a monetary reward for one lucky subscriber to this channel to celebrate 3,000 subscribers. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I've been all, about, been all over the place. Started here, went out, back here now. Until Friday, take care.